Hey yo, LAZ, I'm in Queens. Queens Bridge to be exact. Shout out to the whole Queens Bridge project. I just left my dudes at the How It Happened podcast. Just did an exclusive interview with them dudes. Make sure you go over there and check that interview. Make sure you subscribe, leave some comments, and tell them Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man sent you. You heard? Z-Lord, get at me. Keeping this order, asylum is what they seek. Yet this economy's weak. Like John Gotti said, the money's out on the street. You need the heart of Balboa, the eye of the tiger. Hey yo, make sure you check that rare air chief Cherokee featuring Brav the God on Spotify. Coming up, right? You know, I, I was in the streets, of course. You know, I was I was getting money, I was in the streets, I was selling drugs, doing all that, you know what I'm saying? That that was, you know, that that's how I was making money. So with selling drugs, you know, comes beef. Now I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give you a good story actually. I never I don't think I never told a story. Hey yo, LAZ, I done told y'all before. They calling this book the Hood Game of Thrones, you heard? It's called The Blood Sagas by Avery Brown. Shout out to the bro Brooklyn in the building. The bro got major people reading this book and major things about to take place with this book. Make sure you're on the right side of history, you heard? That's Marcy, son. That shit hard, <laughs> That shit hard. That's the number one thing a motherfucker will say. You know what I'm saying? A nigga will run up to you and go, yo, that's some crazy shit that a son done to you. Yo, but that nigga's mean, son, on that motherfucker. <laughs> So yeah, bro, so you know, with this whole Marcy talk that we've been doing lately, like, you know, I had to get up with you because you a true Marcy legend, true Marcy icon, an OG, and the series just wouldn't be right without me having you on here, here that real Marcy Brooklyn spill. So, you know, tell, what's the story of the Haven? Where, where did it all start for you? Man, listen, right, first and foremost, man, thank you for having me, bro. Great you know, man, you know. From the time I peeped your joint, man, and hearing those stories, and knowing, it's funny that, and knowing you doing the stories, knowing that I used to write stories and post stories and shit. Right? Mm. I don't know if you're aware of that. That 444 page was something vicious for those who knew about that. But yeah, man, I, I think your shit was dope, and I really couldn't wait to do this, bro. That's what's up. Especially if I, I, I don't heard some, some of the people from Marcy doing it and shit, and I'm like, nah. I gotta get a part of this and shit. That's right, that's you know right. Saying, shout shit. out to Big Slop, shout out to Trub, shout out to the dudes who put in that Marcy Memoirs work. You heard? Yes, the man. bro Corey. Now, I mean, we had some good Marcy stories on there, but I know you got the super Marcy stories. Yeah, I'm straight up. Stories for days, man. But yeah, man, you got the perfect platform, man, and it's a pleasure for us to even be sitting out doing this, man, for me. I've been wanting to do this for Marcy. You get what I'm saying? Um, but first, right, from the top, man, you guys got to follow me at Marcy Made Series, man. You, you got to follow me on IG. I'm on Marcy, the Marcy Made Series, man. Follow that. You got to follow that. And if you didn't see Marcy Made documentary, you playing yourself. And if you didn't, I'm going to give you a chance to. After you hear, you know what I'm saying, Marcy memoirs, you might want to check out on um, Marcy May, just on the love, bro. Definitely. Go Brooklyn. check that on Amazon or Amazon Prime Video, Tubi. You Tubi. heard download it, stream it. It's fire. You heard it's Brooklyn. Share it. You know what I'm saying? With no with, with, with no you know with, with no hatred, no no BS, you know what I'm saying, towards anybody, man. It's a real good documentary. We getting crazy. Um Man, I, I don't know. We we had like five different platforms of streaming services that picked us up. Oh word. You know what I'm saying? Um we doing good, bro. We 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 doing really good, man. So the support has been there. Um and I just been yo, like it's dope, man. Check it out again, check it out. But Marcy made memoirs. Eight platforms. Oh, eight platforms? Nine with Amazon. Now I'm with Amazon, bro. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. You, if you ain't seen Marcy made documentary, you playing yourself, man. And 
like he just said, nine different platforms. You don't get on nine different platforms just by doing just nothing. It don't happen that way, man. That's hard work and dedication, and thank y'all for tuning into that, man. I appreciate it. You know, the love. Yeah, that's big but, business. You know what I'm saying? But Marcy Memoirs. <sighs> Where do I start now, right? I'm gonna start right with, um, shout out to all my OGs, man. All the, the people I used to look up to. You know what I'm saying? The, the G Cash, the Moets, the How Bows, the Burrells, you know what I'm saying? Um, Danny, Danny Dan, um, all the Marcy made OGs, man. Shout out to all of them, man. Um, I think uh, watching them had, you know, I, I'm, I got a little bit installed in, in me and just watching all of that all my life that Marcy made, watching them, looking up to them. Shout out to Black Merc. A lot of people don't know that Merc was like an older brother to me on some quiet shit. Like Black Merc, shout out to Rest in Peace, Black Merc. But um, shout out to all my OGs, man. If I missed any of you, man, um, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'll mention it during this interview somewhere down the line when I tell you about how Marcy was for me. Um, I come from some of the projects, really. Mm. Um, my my mom and them was living in Marcy before me because I was staying at my grandma's house in Sumner Projects. Shout out to Sumner Projects to the niggas I grew up. You know, I grew up with Shannon and Arnold and Natural and all of them and Diesel and all of them. I grew up with uh, a, a, a lot of them, Sumner and Tompkins cats. So I went to 59, which was PS 59, where it was Sumner and Tompkins. So that, I had a relationship. This is going to play out in the, in the long run, in the years to come. And this is like, what year? Like This is seven, eight years old. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking one first grade through fourth grade. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, first grade through fourth grade. So this is seven, eight, nine, whatever. Um, I grew up there. Um, I was staying in Sumner. I, I would have been there longer, but to a tragic event, like two of my best friends got murdered. You know what I'm saying? Like that was my first encounter. Like that was my first encounter of death for uh, us, for a young boy. You they know they were some of the dudes? Some of the, no, they was my little friends, a 12 year old and a nine year old type of situation like that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Heinous crime. What happened to them though? You know what I'm saying? Um, they found they found one my uh, one of my, my little homeboy in the apartment, you knowing the elevator shaft and shit, hanging shit. Tragic, man. I, I don't even want to talk about it, but rest in peace, LaShawn and Greg, that those that's who my friends was. Mm. And that was the turning point of my life of knowing like, yo, this is a real, it's a boogeyman. You know what I'm saying? For a kid. You used to running around the hallways and doing all of this until your innocence is broken with some shit like that. Mm -hmm. So now you're not, when you, when you run around the hallways, you're like this. You're scared. You're asking somebody to walk you upstairs type of shit. So that's your encounter. That's the, the trauma from that shit. But when that happened and they ain't find the people who did it right away, my mom said, nah, you got to come to Marcy and shit. So that's how mm -hmm. I ended up at Marcy. Did saying. they ever catch the dude who did that though? Oh, they caught him. If you want to Google that, man, I don't know. That's like, in, I want to say in seven, like, I want to say 79, 78. So he just was a crazed child killer? Nah, running it around. was two guys um, broke into the crib and, and shorty was home type of situation. And yo, they did some wild shit, man, like really some wild shit. If you would Google that, man, and you'll see why I don't really want, I can't even like reiterate how they did him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um, they caught him, and that, that's cool. Man. That's what's up. Um, so with that, that like I said, they all, my mom's automatically say, yo, come on, Marcy, it's your so, so that's how I ended up in Marcy early, like that. 
and getting there. Now, let me not fast forward though. Growing up in Sumner was 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 popping, right? You know what I mean? Um, people I was around that raised me and that shit. My my godfather was from Sumner, right? My godfather's name was Money Tree. His name was Money Tree. You know what I'm saying? And I used to watch him and look up to him. Every Saturday, he come get me. I'm going to barbershop. I'm going to Aiken's barbershop, get a haircut. You know, got money in your pocket. Boom, you hit a couple of dollars. You know, fly. I was, it, it, that, I looked up to him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no role model there, but that's my godfather played this position. So I kind of had an eye on hustling when just watching my godfather. So when I got to Marcy, I ain't know nobody really, and I'm coming into the God body era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When, this is when that era is starting to come. When I got to Mars, everybody was turning God. You know what I'm saying? My brother name is Born Divine, Knowledge, this, whatever. So I knew one dude um, that I knew was my brother knew was righteous. Shout out to righteous and shit. And he had a brother named Nugget, which changed his name to Powerful later on. Now, <laughs> I know you heard of Pow Wow in some of the stories right now. I got Pow Wow when we go into fifth grade together, fourth and fifth grade together. When we get, when I moved to Marcy, he was the only one I knew. And Pow Wow was the first to tell me Who I represent, you know what I'm saying? Like, Marcy, we from Marcy. Cause Pow Wow used to, we used to walk through school and there used to be a gang. We used to have to pass through a gang territory. And then, in Marcy? And yeah, you know, we went to, when we got to Marcy, I ended up going to 168, PS 168, which was down the block. But you had to pass through a Spanish block. You had to go through it, wasn't no way around it. And it's like, what, the early 80s? This or is, late? The, yeah, the early 80s. You had the password, these niggas Pat Wani in them. It was a gang. <laughs> I remember one of the head leaders, Pat Wani was his name. So, I, I used to walk to school with Pal, with, with, with Pal. Shit, Pal from the first time, like, yo, first of all, we from Marcy, we ain't no punks. Man. How much older some was than you nah, at the time? Nah, me and Pal the same age. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he more, uh, <laughs> he more, he more gutter, he more gutter with it, you know what I'm saying? Teaching me the ropes of like, yo, now, nah, son, you from Marcy, we ain't no punks, you know what I'm saying? We ain't letting them do this, you know what I'm saying? And, and this is how it's gonna be. But they're trying to rock, run they down robbing them. niggas, everybody, like, 80 percent of the niggas that went to 168 was getting robbed by the gang every day, every other day. The niggas was paying, uh, ex getting extorted for their lunch money and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? But pal. It was like, yo, we ain't, that ain't happening to us. And I'm trying to tell you, we would be walking to school and Pal would be like, look, see, niggas lined up on the fence and everything. Pat Wani going through the pockets and shit, this and that. You see them pulling out wallets. And Pal was like, nah, that shit ain't gonna happen. And you said them niggas, where they was from exactly? The, the, that gang? The gang was from this street. Um, what the hell? You had to pass Bartlett, Bartlett Street. You had to pass this. 168 was on this street. You had to pass it. And they knew, you know what I'm saying? Niggas be out there with their jackets and shit. So one day, pal, we go to school and they stressed us. Right? <laughs> they stressed us, right? So pal, like, like they buy no powerful, right? So pal was like, what? See my wallet type of shit, right? <laughs> so pal, like, man. Fuck out of here, yo, pal, take off his bag and shit. He like, yo, hold this, hold this to him, hold this. He, he giving me his book bag. He like, fuck that, y'all ain't taking shit. I'ma fight all of y'all, one, two, and three. Like, he plays 7.30 on these niggas, and they like, I'm like, hold on, this nigga said he gonna fight all three of them. He like, you first, then you, then you. Like, he tricked them out of jumping. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, Fearless. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I, I, I'm peeping this shit. I'm holding a book bag and everything. Like, yo, this nigga will fight all three. But the real deal was, them niggas didn't even, they, they didn't want to fight him because they thought he was 730. 
He was like, nah, and it ended up to like, yo, you know, you cool, you one of the cool ones, man. We gonna leave you alone type of shit. And pal like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not having that shit. And this is my cousin too. He get the same treatment, you know what I'm saying? So that was a pass for me right there. But that also was an eye opener for me about now. So I see what he mean about, you know, representing Marcy and shit. This is what we gotta do, protect our shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna keep that with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's public school. So as the years started to, you know, Pal started to get much more advanced into the streets than I did. So make sure you know he not even going to school no more. He's doing, you know, he's going to spa fit and all that shit and this and that. So he's done off. And then I'm on my way to actually junior high school, you know what I'm saying? Sixth grade by by about 10, about 12, 13. I'm on some entrepreneurship. Like my step pops was owning a social club and shit on the app and he was a great big hustler and this and that and the third. And then, you know, I used to go to his club and on a Saturday and clean up. You know what I'm saying? And make money. But I found myself always being there after school, do my homework and go there just to hang out with him and shit and be there, be around the social club, watching and seeing what he's doing. But I also would see, end up working for the number man. His, his, his right hand man used to run the numbers. So his right hand man used to be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Go um, run these numbers in the projects and shit. So I go to people cribs, old people cribs, get their numbers. List. I was hustling at a very young age. You know what I'm saying? So while a lot of niggas in Marcy was getting a character of a gangster and all that shit, I was really fascinated with hustling. You know what I'm saying? I was really fascinated with hustling. So here I am now, I'm 14, 13 years old, I'm fucking working in the numbers, I'm working for my step pops. Now that I'm working for my step pops, it's the mob, the mafia owner of a social club across the street. And I'm talking about real social club. I'm in a real mafia, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Philly, you know what I'm saying? I know we rest in peace. Real mafia dude. Say, yo, you know what I'm saying? I like the way you do his, his your, your social club cleanup. Come clean up over here every week in the same way. And that's, yo, I'm talking about four, five hundred dollars a week for a 13 year old, you know what I'm saying? That's great. You know what I mean? So I was just always into getting money. Then I had a link with a supermarket when this nigga had five cash residues on there and nobody was packing bags at the time. I go to Sumner, I get my guard brother, your Robbie. Shout out to Robbie, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Rob, my guard brother. I go get Robbie and I go get three other new niggas and say, yo, y'all wanna work this register? Y'all gonna make a mad money? Just give me $50 and shit a day. And these niggas make it $200, $300. I'm talking about kids, man. Packing bags? Packing bags, bro. Crazy. We did at 6 o'clock in the morning. Packing bags, getting people to their cars, putting the groceries in their cars. You're getting 5 and $10. And where you, which supermarket was that? This was called Big R. This was right off Myrtle Ave and shit. Mm. This was called Big R. Bro. About time Atari came out. I was buying my own shit. I went to the store and bought my own shit. What, Atari? Atari. When niggas was struggling, their parents were struggling, <laughs> like, yo, I'm gonna get me Atari for Christmas. Nah, my nigga, I bought my own Atari, bro. What, 2600? 20 to 52, the, mm. the, the big one, the 499 one. I went and got that, right? My mom said, damn, you paid $500 for that? It's like, yeah. Two days later, my mom was like, where the game at? You know where that shit was? Next door in Jay Crib, Jay was playing. My mom was like, yo, you spent $500 to give to let somebody else play? I was just like, yo, that shit, it, it didn't make no money. But you, you gave it to Sonny, I used to nah, just be taking yo, it back yo, and forth. I don't, I don't play with this shit. Like, after I played with it, I realized like, it's fun, but it's not no money in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit was next door. You know what I'm saying? And then I blew up off a paper route. I had a paper route on Myrtle and No Strength. I had a Sunday paper route that was taking down almost a stack. 
for the week. On a Sunday. On one day. On one day. Mm. I had no times to mingle in the projects and be like, yo, this is my first gun. I, I mean, I've been, I would get to that, but I was already having money before all these niggas was already getting guns in their hands and doing all this, man. I wasn't, I wasn't fascinated with the gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I talk my shit, but I never talk about me being somebody I wasn't. You ain't gonna hear me. I, 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 I see no, I see no point in, in, in violence. That shit ain't make money. I ain't never seen my OGs really running around talking about they got beef and this and that and the third. They was all about money. So I had seen no, I seen no point in that shit. But it will come later on, it will come with the game when you realize that it will come with the game. And you just gotta make the right choices to avoid that. You get what I'm saying? So, Marcy, to me, like I said, I carry, I characterize me to be like top five in Marcy that was getting money. Mm. Who's that five though? It ain't five. I'm just, I mean, matter <laughs> of fact, yo, they can't, yo, son, when it comes to this getting money now. I'm in the top five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I won't say, I won't try to, you know, put it in order, but I tell in, you what. In no order, but five. Yo, and I'm telling you, Stan Grouch, shout out to Stan, one of the best that did it. You understand? Danny Dan, and me. No, not me. It's the, the rest would be Puerto Rican. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't no niggas taking down no money like we did. What like, you mean, Puerto Ricans that lived in Marcy? Puerto Ricans that lived in Marcy. Rest in peace, Ricky. It, yo, it was a nigga in my building, bro, that was way large. And they treated me the same way, like a little brother, like in and out of their crib. Shout out to Fabian, Maldiando, and Brenda, and Josue. They, any Marcy know who Ricky was? You say he from your building? He from my building on the first floor. <laughs> yes. These niggas was getting it. It's, and what building I, Danny Dan? He was from your building too? Danny Dan was from a different, oh no, I don't know. Danny Dan was from the, uh, uh, a, different, a different side, Nostra side, I believe. Like, I never had any dealings with Danny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I know of him. He knew of me and we spoke, but I, don't, I think... Danny had so much going on, like, he never really fucking looked at me like, this nigga getting money. You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never showed him that, you know what I'm saying? I never showed him that to a point that he was interested in me. He had a lot of them niggas getting money in Marcy, but it wasn't the money that I showed niggas. You understand what I'm saying? Danny made niggas workers. I turned niggas into bosses. That's the big difference from it. That's why I say, yo, I'm in the top five. Niggas can't fuck with me when they come to getting money in Marcy. They know what it is. They know what it is. <laughs> you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? And I ain't, I ain't talking that shit. To nah, man, that's nah, just real. I'm talking, talking, talking some bullshit. And, I, I, and not only that, bro, I always remain to be who I am. Like I said, I ain't never, yo, you, tell, you go through any stories of, of what you got, I ain't never get it, I ain't, I, I, that violence shit ain't been me. The only problems <laughs> I ever got into would be behind Jay. All the violence, all the shit I ever got into was behind him. Being shot, being putting guns to my head, well, that's, been, that's been behind him. You know what I'm saying, my little brother. Nah, you're not gonna fuck with him. I was good in Marcy, bro. Don't get it fucked up. Like I said, I wasn't on no gangster shit, but niggas wasn't punking me. You get what I'm saying? And I look at it like this, bro. With the people that I was associated with, I felt like I was a made man. People didn't fuck with me because I didn't have that kind of energy to make you be like hating on me. Like, I've always had 
the energy of like, yo, you want to get some money? Yo, um, it's all love. I never came around these niggas talking about these niggas is bums and this and that. That ain't been me. Nah, fuck that nigga. You good or you not good? Okay, cool. It don't matter, bro. Roll up. It's all there. Roll up. So I made niggas feel comfortable around me. So I never been one of those niggas that was jealous of anybody. So nobody had no judgment on me to be like, I don't like that nigga. You get what I'm saying? And some of the people, like I said, that I was associated with made me a man. Made me a made man. Don't get it fucked up. I appreciate those niggas that I talked about not giving me no problems. Getting, when I was getting money coming through the projects with big shit on. That's respect. You get what I'm saying? Because they, they, they could have came at me at any given time. Like who? Who you mean? Like I'm saying the niggas that was robbing them, the Moets and the Hal Bows and all these niggas that was, that was our elders would be, you know how niggas be. They would be like, who the fuck is that? With that on. But I always had somebody next to them that'd be like, nah, don't fuck with him. He's he good money. He good money, yo. He, he, he don't fuck with him. For what? Anything you want. That nigga either can help you get it or he got it. What you, you know, fuck with him. He's an earner. Mm. You understand that? That'll get you a long way, bro. He's an earner. And just niggas just always have fuck with me. Like I said, no problems in the projects and like in even down to now, man. Like the younger generation that don't know me. Like I said, I don't fuck with their uncles. I don't, you know, they uncles would, you know, shout out to Metcalf. I don't dealt with Metcalf. Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know, I used to pay Metcalf to help hold me down to go down to uh Red Hook. So I had people that fucked with me on the low on some real gangster shit that was gangsters, that was real gangsters, that fuck with me. Nah, that's just the haven, man. So like I said, while these niggas was really coming into their, the era of wanting to carry guns and all that shit, son, that shit wasn't me at all. I was, over, I was just busy doing some other shit. The only thing they knew about me of that I had a name for in that project is that basketball. I used to bust now ass. that, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, oh yeah, I'm gonna give it to you. That's what I had a name for. Mm -hmm. And Monster, you was busting ass? Oh yeah, I was giving it up. <clears throat> I was giving it up. I was one of them niggas, nah, don't be standing under that rim thinking it's slow, <laughs> thinking I'm slow. I'm, I'm gonna catch it off the rim on you <laughs> on some Vince Carter shit. You know what I'm saying? On that. You know what I mean? It's always been love for me, man. Like, I think I've just been a, a, I'm a genuine, I was a genuine kid where people looked at me like, yo, he's a good dude. He, he shorty good. You know what I mean? I used to carry the Spanish nigga in my next building, I used to carry dope to the dope spot for him. Before school, make me a hundred dollars before school. I'ma carry, I'ma go to this crib, I'ma get the book bag, and I'ma go up Ellery Street at 7.30. This is when dope was being sold on time schedules. You get what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know where they do that shit no more now. But this is when dope was being sold on a time schedule. I would drop that book bag off on Ellery before I go to school at 7.30. How old you was at that time? Public school or junior high school? Junior high school? Junior high school. You know what I'm saying? Not that I was, I was just that kind of cool kid. I was that guy, you know what? The dice game, niggas gonna come around, it's gonna get stuck up. Guess what? Okay. No balance. Get up out of here. Oh, get up. <laughs> I'm going. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I did not live off my brother, right? Born Divine. Shout out to my brother, Born Divine. That's your older brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, all this I did myself, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never been that type of nigga that, like I said, if you hear my name ring through Marcy, it's about really getting money, man. Your brother had his whole separate own, own team in Marcy? Nah, my brother wasn't, my brother was into something else. 
he older. My brother was into, them niggas was doing expensive B&Es. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I would come home from school and it'd be 30 fur coats in my crib. <laughs> nah, no bullshit. And they all work minks and, and all kinds of shit. Work five and ten thousand dollars and shit. Them niggas was into some high maintenance B and E's and shit back then. You know what I mean? And they, they that shit used to work. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and you know, after that, my brother did. My brother just been doing a lot of time after that. But he come from the old school. My brother got like thirty joints in. Out of his life. He's still locked in. Nah, he's he out, in. man. You know what I'm saying? He out, and it's a blessing, man. This has been the longest he's been out of prison. This is the longest we've been out together. You know what I'm saying? Together out on the street. And, and it's a blessing, man. He working. You know what I'm saying? It, it take a, uh, it's a lot, you know what I'm saying, for them dudes to come back into, you know, society. You know what I mean? Like, when it comes to this mental health down, now everybody get an understanding on it because everybody dealing with it. When he comes home, these dudes come home for 25 and 30 years. That shit is something different. You know, um, but yeah, man, um, Marcy, man, it, it, it ain't, I can never say that Marcy was hard for me. You know what I'm saying? It never. The only, the, really, the, the most gangster shit that I really was doing really was loan sharking. Like, shout, shout out Beehive, man. You know, that's Jay Cousin. You know, he, he you know, he fuck with Jay. But that's Jay Cousin. I used to fuck with Jay Cousin real hard and shit. And we used to do this loan shark and shit. And we used to keep mad guns. But, you know, that's probably about the most. He from Marcy, too? Yeah, he from Marcy, too. And shit. So he, he, he's still with Jay. I think he's, he, you know, that's his family. You know, shit, you know? He been running around with him for a minute, too. But. Um, we was doing the loan shark and fucking with guns and shit. Then I, I, I you know, I, I end up messing with a lot of older dudes, man, that was much older than me, man. Um, learning more, learning more, man. And when it came to hustling, man, like when the first, first, the first package fell in my hand, but I was already, I was built for this shit. You know what I'm saying it's almost like when. And the paid in full movie, he was like, yo, man, like, I was built for this shit. Like, Where that first package came from? Found it. Found it as a problem. <laughs> yo, my nigga, that's, that's gonna be a whole nother Marcy memoir right there. But yeah, my first package, I found that shit, my nigga. Mm. What, so what type of pack was it, 500? Nah, that shit was like uh, 62. I found this shit in the back seat, man. I was screwing the chick in the back seat. And, like, this chick and shit, right? I'm telling you, I was one of these young niggas, like I already had money, right? Matter of fact, and Jay was doing talent shows. We went out to talent shows, we went out to one of them talent shows and shit in Queens and shit, and I met this, this shorty and shit. She was much older than me, you know what I'm saying? I might have been 16, 17, she might have been 25, 27. That, that would be older than us, considered back then. And she was driving. So you know, we like, oh shit, we got a shorty with a car. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so shorty used to come down to Marcy, son, and she used to always have different whips. You know what I'm saying? Like she had one whip. And then one day she came, this big ass Lincoln Continental, bro. You know what I'm saying? I used to always be banging her in the car too. You know what I mean? When she pull up in the project, go, you'll park. We'll park over here and she'll be banging this shit. I guess that's what she enjoyed. She pull up for the bang out, right? So <laughs> I'm killing that in the back seat, right? And it's like one of them, oh shit. My arm slipped, but I feel this bag in my hand. I pull this bag out, shit. What? I'm from Marcy and I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> you understand? Like, Ain't nobody putting no goddamn bacon soda in no damn baggy just to be playing games and it, 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 it ain't hiding. Like, automatically that goes in the stash. Like, you ain't tell a chick nothing? Nah, I ain't saying <laughs> nothing. I'm going to get my bone and I'm going to be out. When I got out of there, I get upstairs, I'm like, oh shit, I look at this. Put a little in this bag, in a little bag, like put a little bit. Then I go, I told my 
mom was like, Mom, I found this. What's this? And my mom automatically go, Boy, where you get that from? So I know what it is now, right? And I'm like, Nah, I found it. I found it. And she like, Get that. Don't you do no, no. You try to house me for it. And I'm like, Nah, I'm going to give it back type of shit. But I ain't telling her, like, it's a whole bunch more where I got this from. So I'm like, Cool, I know what it is. So, um, shit, nigga, I bagged that shit up. And me and Jay went to work on that shit. <laughs> what, in the building? Nah, in the neighborhood. Mm. And at that time, everybody get high. You told yo, him you yeah, found yeah, it? Yeah, I was like, yo, my nigga, I found this. Boom, boom, boom. Only thing I ain't know is I knew how to bag, but the only thing I didn't know was weight. I only knew about what I used to see. Like, you know, I mean, my step pops was so nice with it. He eyeballing a lot. So, you know, I try to eyeball and shit. So, you know, fuck it. So, I go, you know, and, and make me some packets up. And next thing you know, like I said, everybody getting hot. This one, sniffing powder was the shit. You get what I'm saying? So, everybody getting hot. Young niggas are getting hot. This before crack? This before crack. Mm. So y'all was just slinging right, 20s right, of coke? Right, 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 yeah, no. Nah, dimes and 20s of coke or something? Yeah, I had, I had uh, dimes of coke. Mm. But my shit was 20s and 30s, because- You was putting too I much in it. too much. <laughs> and I ain't mind you, I ain't putting no mix in it or nothing. That shit is like, I'm wondering why these niggas coming right back fast. You know, we going shopping every day and shit. You know, like, that's my first package. I ate off that shit, and then in my, you know, the, one of my runners really put me on. Because I kept wondering, like, why this nigga coming back, double coming back? Then one of the niggas came back and was like, yo, that nigga turned around selling them shits for 50, not 50 dollars. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm only asking for 20 dollars, this nigga turned around. So my man like, yo, this is how you gotta do it, boo. So he showed me a little this and how to do that. But by then, I'm running out. But I made it, you know, we made a nice amount of money. We just did shopping every day. You know, I blew the shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know nothing about re up. I ain't know nothing about that. I only knew about, okay, cool, I got rid of that. But I established a clientele behind that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I established a clientele behind that. And that clientele brought other people to me. And that's where shout out, rest in peace, Conan. A lot of motherfuckers didn't know how hard I fucked with Conan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm one of them little niggas that you would never think that, yo, this nigga was fucking with this nigga, for real. Yeah, shout out to Conan, man, rest in peace. Conan plugged me to Jose. Jose, Spanish Jose, he knew me as a little boy growing up, but he ain't know I get busy. Conan was Spanish too? Nah, Conan was black, <laughs> but he could pass for Spanish, Italian, Jewish. <laughs> yo, yo, son, you know, no fucking, I ain't homophobic or nothing, but no homo. Conan was one of the, like, if. If I could have put my money into putting it behind him to be a model, I'd have ate off it. Conan had, I used to hang with him to get bitches. Mm. And I already know he gonna get first dibs at all the bitches, yo. He from Flushing Anywhere side? Anywhere he went, yo, he from my side. Conan, physique, the curly hair, blue eyes, real blue eyes, like Spanish, he would, yo son, I used to go up to, Eli Whitney was all girl high school. Son, the bitches would be running around him like, like he amazing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna get left though. I got pussy just because her girlfriend wanna be around that. So son was, Conan was that nigga, bro. When it came to bitches, just, I'm just not gonna be bringing them around my bitches. No. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, for real. Like, anybody that see this fucking video right now that know Conan, Ask them that, son. Niggas ain't over hating shit, but ask them that. Say, yo, listen, I'm not bringing Conan around my girls. <laughs>
you bugging the fuck out, son. <laughs> like, <laughs> is you tripping? Like, so but that, why didn't call him Conan? He was Brolic, nah, or that was Conan his name? Was my, shit, Conan was my size at 15, 16. Mm. That's why they called him Conan, though, because he was yeah. Brolic? Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Fair skin, you would never, you could, you could tell he was black as a mother. He, he was one of us. But that nigga was mixed with, with all kinds of shit. You wouldn't be able to tell. But that was that was Jose Man, though. That was Spanish Jose Man. I mean, Conan and Spanish Jose had a real good relationship. You know what I'm saying? And he put me on the Spanish Jose. By the time I met Spanish Jose, like I said, he knew who I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? Spanish Jose was like, yo, son, I heard your name is ringing. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, would you want to do some work for me? Like, what? And I'm out? Like, he don't know I'm out. Like, <laughs> he, he thinking I'm really, I'm like, shit, I'm taking whatever you got, bro. And that nigga gave me a package. Son. Oh, he said he heard of your name from from, Conan, from the Conan six like, dudes that y'all got yeah, rid of. Yeah, right. Mm. Conan like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Jose, Jose pulled me to the side like, nigga. And the shit he gave me, like that shit was killing the projects. It was killing the projects. Mm. And that led me to my mom's like, nah. He, he getting out of hand. Like, this has got to be a... Uh, we gotta change the demographics. And that's what got me to Trent. I had to move my mom's like, nah, let's move him out of Jersey. And that's part two of Jersey. It's gonna be <laughs> sick, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Bro. But Marcy Winwise, like I said, man, shout out to all the OGs, man. Rest in peace, Calvin, man. One of the best that ever did it. Like, I, I really got my character from which watching a lot of them, man. And watching a lot of them know, do things that I probably wouldn't do. So I learned a lot from that too. And I know a lot of niggas' names that I probably named, right? You know what I'm saying? They was that nigga back then. You know what I'm saying? So everybody ain't turned to be out the way they, you know, turn out to be the way they was back then. You know what I'm saying? So I'm speaking that just in case, you know, whatever the niggas that, didn't fulfill to be who they was in the end. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to the new generation that's coming up, man, and Marcy, man, that's holding shit down, man. Like, Turtle. Um, shout out to Turf, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, a man, to one of the, the, the <laughs> Marcy finest, man. Um, and the whole other side, man. Like, Marcy been good to me, man. He never gave me no problems. I don't have no bad stories in Marcy. I don't have, I wasn't around for none of that. You know what I'm saying? So to hear, you know what I mean? Shout out to Slop. To hear Slop talk about all of the same people, bro, and, and, and the same breath that I'm talking about, man, that was a real impact. And it just was an honor, man. Like, I just learned now, going all the way down from powerful, bro, just wherever I go, man, just represent New York, but I'm from Marcy. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, going on on these next, next joints that we gonna say, I'm gonna tell you what's the difference. I'm from Marcy, but I represent New York. And I'm, I'm definitely gonna let you know this, like these next joints that we get ready to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Jersey, Delaware, you know what I'm saying? Uh, North Carolina, Maryland, everywhere, like Baltimore. Yeah, I consider myself the, a, rep, a New York representative. Any place that I talk about I've been, you can go there and do your research, or it's gonna be somebody on that internet gonna tell you, like, he ain't lying. Yeah, cause there's a lot of people out there that think, you know, Brooklyn dudes ain't money getters and hustlers. They think we just gun busters and robbers, but they don't know we got Brooklyn legends that took a lot of bread in this country. Yo, bro, man. Rest in peace, Corey Holly, man, from Kingsboro. I'm gonna tell you, bro. If he wouldn't have died, man, he died on a motorcycle accident. That was one of the realest, realest niggas I met and came to encounter her when it came down to business, money, getting money. Like, if Corey wouldn't have died, bro, shout out Trick, man. Fucking with you, Trick, I ain't forget you. Corey would have died, man. I can't tell you where I could be. Like, aside from Jay, 
whatever my relationship with Jay, this thing Corey, man, was like uh, another me. You know what I'm saying? And I know that another me, where I was, me and him was about to take it. And like, it, like I saw Biggie back in Western House when Jay, Biggie, Buster Grimes, I was in them lunchrooms every day seeing that. I was watching them back then. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't really know Biggie like that. I seen him all the time down there. But they, all right, that's what's up. But Corey, like I said, rest in peace, bro. I had a, I had a condo on Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue, um, downtown, a nice spot downtown and shit. But the spot was hood as a motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't know this, you know what I'm saying? I just needed a place in New York. So, and it looked decent. The, the side block looked decent. Grand, Grand Avenue. It looked decent. Got the spot and shit. After about a month and shit of being there, um, one day, Corey gave me a ride home and shit. You know what I'm saying? Corey from Kingsborough. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say shout out to him because uh, he never got his flowers, man, before he left here like this. Um, so Corey said, yo, he gave me a ride home. <laughs> and when he pulled on this block, he like, nigga, you live around here? I was like, yeah, I live right here. He was like, Oh no, bro, you park your shit here? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He was like, your bike too? I was like, yeah. He was like, nah, 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 I'll be back. Yo, tomorrow I'm gonna come, I'm gonna introduce you to some my and shit, man. That's gonna probably, he gonna look out for your shit and you be all right around here, but you know that nigga introduced me to Biggie? Mm. That nigga brought me straight to Big and was like, yo, Big, this is the Haven, the Haven, this is Big and shit, this and that, the third rule. Um, you ever see a nigga around here, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh shit. That's fucking big. Oh, this is when the son was already rhyming and <laughs> he shit? He was rhyming, you know what I'm saying? Like, on his way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and then the next encounter with him, the next time um, I seen Biggie, he was out of this atmosphere, man. I want to say we went to a, uh, he went with me to a, to a Father Square to see Snoop Dogg, and my cousin from was with me one day, and we, Went to see and Biggie was in the car with me. So and Biggie was in the car with me and fucking my cousin kept going. And I kept my cousin kept going, yo, it's mad crowded. We not getting in here, we not getting in here. And I kept telling my cousin, nah, we got big with us. We got big with us. And my cousin, he OG town, he from East New York. Crazy money. Crazy money. You understand what I'm saying? When I sit here and tell you story, when that story come up, my East New York, man. Where you from in East New York? He's from Pickin Avenue, East New York. The little boot project right Pickin there. Picking projects? Picking projects over there. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something vicious. But, Shout out to my cousin Barry and all of them from over there. Yes. Um, and his name is Stokes. Shout out Stokes, man. Yeah. Get you know, crazy money over there. You know? he, my cousin kept, because he, he a fly ass nigga. Rich, fly ass nigga. Man, get, man, who the fuck is Biggie, man? Who him? I'm like, Biggie right in the car. <laughs> He like, man, that line, this and that, and the third. Man, I ain't even gonna lie, sure enough, bro. So we got that car and shit, and Big went to that door. That motherfucker's let us in, and I probably grabbed a few more bitches to get, yo, come on, y'all, come on, y'all, come on, this, this. Because I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? We, we got in there fucking with Ice Cube and all of that shit, man. That shit was you know, some real shit, man. And this was before niggas was really ringing like that. But yo, I've been all in these streets of Brooklyn, bro. East New York, Coney Island. I live down Coney Island. A lot of niggas don't know that. I mean, early 80s, late 80s, 86, 87, I was in Coney Island. What was your relationship with Biggie? How was it like, like after that? Like After that, Biggie blew up, man. I don't think he knew. I never seen him no more. Corey passed on us with the bike thing. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, them dudes become a different, like they experience so much, I didn't get a chance to ever get around them. But, but, my right hand man, <laughs> if Biggie was alive, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And that's been my right hand man for 35 years, 35, 40 years. Shout out to the one and only Pint, man. When I say nigga, I had a past. When I say I was as a made man, niggas knew who I fuck with and knew what things was about.
knew what type of shit was going, going down. Like I said, I was a made man. You talking about half pint? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's been my right hand man 40 years, 35 years to this day. You know what I'm saying? And then his right hand man was Tilo. So when these niggas still shout out Tilo and all that shit, that lets you know, nigga, when I say I was a made man, like I was an earner, nigga. I made sure that my team always ate. Like I said, I took niggas from off the street, man, off that gangster shit and turned them into someone, showing them some old never direction. That was deep when you told me that. You said, <clears throat> you said, yo, I know gun busters and robbers that I, I, t I turned them into money getters. That was some, that was the deepest shit I ever heard a in my life. Them, man. Shout out to Love, Love, Gunner. Shout out to them, yo. I had a whole slew of niggas that I really tried to show them how to get money. I really tried to show them a different life. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cause I've never been about me, man. When you see pictures, when you see all of that shit, son, it don't look like, it look like we was eating. When you see my old pictures, you see all those jewels, you see all that, you see us as a team, we, it just, it's for everybody. Niggas know who I am with Marcy when I, no, let's eat. I used to walk around with a with a, a, a ball in my pocket about this size, and that should be three ounces and shit, and then niggas be like, yo, why you carrying in pocket like this? Yo, bro, here. I used to have niggas looking for me when I come to New York. When I ain't come to New York to do nothing but just chill, niggas looking for me like, yo, bro. Shout out to Twin, rest in peace, the other twin, man. You already know what it is, man, <laughs> you know? Like, for real, man, it was always about sharing, and I think that was my downfall. Just trying to make sure everybody eat. Trying to make sure everybody eat, and that's, that's not gonna be the way. You can't do that because everybody have a different direction. Everybody got a different um, way that what, what they wanna do. And I try to maintain that. That's why when you, see my story, you'll be like, well, where did the separation go? Nah, because niggas want to become bosses of their own, own team and shit. And I can't hate on that. I would never sit here and say that all my choices that I made in life was good. You know what I'm saying? I can say that all my choices in my life got me to where I'm at, and I guess this is where I'm supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? But I love Marcy, bro. I love representing from where I'm from, and I was taught that from the very beginning I got there. That dumb Spanish niggas, that dumb, dumb gangs is not going, they not going to rob us, bro. Powerful said they not going to rob us, but we from Marcy. Shout out to the bro Saquon, because that's powerful cousin. You know what I mean? My bro that came up with this series with me. You feel me? That's his cousin. Bro. And I'm telling you, fucking powerful from that age. Like he, he been who he was from the day, from the day I known him, man. And he just wanted to make sure that I wasn't no punk. Period, man. And, that, and I just that's just been installed in me. But I ain't trying to prove that to nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like nobody in them projects can sit here and tell you nothing about. They took something from me. That I was a punk. That they played me. None of that shit, man. Cause that's not what my energy brought around. At all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really had love for everybody, even my OGs, like I said. Down to their sons and their kids now, the new generation. You know what I'm saying? That find it hard to fucking be like, who that? Well, who that? I don't give a fuck. Nah, bro, I respect your people, so I respect you, so you see all, it's all respect. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how I can sit, people can sit and say, I, I can never say I had it hard at Marcy and it was hard for me. You know what I'm saying? I was teachable. I was one of them alpha males that was going, that wanted to learn. And then when I learn, I'm going to put my peoples on. That's, that's just that's who I am, bro. And I'm still that nigga. I'm still that nigga, son. <laughs> Top of the line, everything, I'm still that nigga, bro. I seen it, I mean, it ain't much that I ain't done in my lifetime that I feel like uh, I accomplished it. All the way to the end, all the way to the end. When I say to the end, and I'm talking about that, a federal trial, 
winning and being back on the street and becoming a citizen, having a, you know, be, you know, going to school, graduating from college, becoming a carpenter, and, 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 and then directing a fucking film. Successful film. Exactly. I ain't got time to hate on Jay, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would I hate on somebody that, I'm a, I'm a part of that shit. I, I, I embrace that. I embrace that success. Because when I hear that music and I hear him talk, bro, that energy in me be like, yeah, that's all me. That I'm a part of something that nobody's seen before. I seen that shit when it was on matchbooks and little notepads and little pieces of paper all around the house. So I seen the work, I seen it when it was raw. You can't hate on that, they can't take that. I don't care how they try to switch the narrative, but it's not, I'm a part of the success. I'm the foundation of that. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, this Marcy made documentary explains it all. How I feel, where I come from. The only thing that you didn't get in that uh, film was the, the whole story, the transformation from that forgiveness, the whole story of what I had to go through. That projects you were showing, that was, that was VA or, or Maryland? The projects that you went to with the, had like the-, the, the That was Maryland. How, like when y'all went out there, dudes was trying to, the, the dudes ever try to front on y'all? My nigga, when I went out there, it's all love. Listen to me. Everywhere I went, I went by myself, my nigga. I went by my fucking self. You get what I'm saying? I was in Maryland, and I sit here and tell you them, them projects. Nah, I was on a strip with them. Breaking bread with them, bro. So what, you was coming in hitting dudes with work Break, and all hitting, that? Hitting dudes with work. Um, still on the block with them. Everybody making money, so what's the problem? And, and, and dudes, dudes was... They honor that. Mm. I just said, everybody making money, so what's the problem? Mm. What's the problem? And it's all love, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I got that, I'm on a strip, I'm up at, I got crack houses, and I got this. I'm young, nigga, and I got older OGs coming at me. This is my turn. Like, damn, I have a bird gone in a couple of hours? And I'm still on the strip. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jay, and yo, Buzz, this is my Uncle Buzz. Shout out to Rest in Peace, my Uncle Buzz, man, one of the most the vital pieces of us to put this puzzle together. Where you from? My Uncle Buzz from New York, man, but when it comes down to the original team, my original team, with me, Jay, Panama, and my Uncle Buzz. Like, my Uncle Buzz is a vital piece to all of this. We was getting from point A to B to C to A to B to C with my Uncle Buzz. You know, he put it, though. Know, that's why, that's what hurted me way more than anything when my Uncle Buzz died and them niggas ain't pay homage. Because the relationship that Jay shared with my Uncle Buzz, the relationship that Emery shared with my Uncle Buzz, the relationship we all had in one house. And my uncle dies, he died for kid, you know, a kidney and all of that shit, bro. Dialysis, man. Yo, bro. For what he for, for what the piece he played to this man, like the nigga was supposed to just live his life gracefully and bow out. You know what I'm saying? They let him go out. That ain't that, that, that it wasn't gangster at all. It wasn't G. It, it, the shit hurt me, man. It kind of was bringing back that hate shit that I had in me for them. Like, how the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, man. My Uncle Buzz, his mom let Jay live here at the crib. Like, I, like shit just, you know, you know how certain shit just trigger you to be like, 
it almost triggered that hate shit back in me, but I had to keep that shit under because I know that shit was just going. But do you actually think that niggas just didn't care or niggas felt like because of the relationship between dudes, they just stayed away and mourned privately? Do you feel son mourned when he passed away? No. Like niggas, it's certain things you gotta show up for. It's certain things you gotta show up for. Then when they show some Hollywood shit you show up for, then you really took you to be like, what? That nigga went where? To who film? You wouldn't give a fuck if it's Oprah. You'd be like, who what the fuck? That should be hurtful. But you know what I mean? Um, he played a vital part, man. And that's just what it is. Uh, that, shit, that shit hurt it. How them niggas handle it, you know what I'm saying? And, and you get to a point where you're like, damn, how many times? I gotta keep forgiving niggas for dumb shit? Like, when you know you should, then, I, then when I scream on y'all, I look like I'm hating. Like, motherfuckers don't know how deep it is. But the motherfuckers do know how deep it is. Ask them in Marcy. You know, you can't get nobody to talk about this in Marcy, right? Because they know the history with us. You ain't found nobody to be in Marcy to be like on some real outspoken shit. Yo, he on some sucker shit. No. Because they know the history. Like, yo, don't get involved in that shit. Them niggas was too tight. They mothers, they sisters. Nah, that shit. Don't get involved. Why you think my interviews on my documentary is not a lot of niggas on there talking about, yo, uh, vouching for me? Because I don't want to put, I ain't want to put niggas in the position of having to choose and shit. You know you fuck with me, but you don't want to, but you want to go to, the, you know, you'll come to me and say, yeah, that's fucked up how that nigga be with you, but you got a whole ticket in your pocket going to the show. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So you don't want to put niggas on the spot. You know what I'm saying? And make them choose. So I let, if you want to come on here and say, yo, son, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying? What's keeping it on? That's cool. Shout out to Ramel, because Ramel was one of the first on the documentary to tell you that, yo, this nigga's real. So shout out to Rod, man. We ain't gonna never forget that one. That was on the Jay-Z Exposed. That's when shit was going viral, viral. But honestly, man, you can't get nobody in Marcy to say shit. They know. And believe by now the industry know. That's why a lot of industry niggas don't say something. Like, nah, I don't say that. Just don't fuck with him. That's what they say to me. Just don't fuck with him. Let me ask you this though, like, you know, sometimes people fall up, they fall apart. Cause you know, I got I got family that, you know, we was like this, and we don't communicate no more. And that hurts me sometimes. And I got my reasons, you feel me? But I still love them, but I got my reasons. Like, you feel me? You think it just got, it's just because y'all went so long without communicating that is a block there? Or, you know, do you think it's just, cause I, I don't believe that, you know, the bro don't still love you. I don't believe that. You feel me? Sometimes people just, they go so long without talking to each other, it becomes awkward now. This was said, that was said, you feel what I'm saying? I can't agree because we've been talking to each other. You, you hear the records? <laughs> you understand? We've been talking, it's just that the only the right people listening understand. He been talking, he been answering, uh, you listen to all of that shit, 444. Four, four. I meant to ask you, did you listen to Bam? That's all me. And the song from Greg and Gangster, that's just one song. It's this, yo, we've been talking. Did you listen to Drake? He been talking. That ain't him been talking no come together shit. <laughs> you understand? That's how I know that them niggas, it ain't, you know. I don't have that in my heart no the haters are over there. I ain't saying that he, he, he got hate in his heart because he don't want to talk to me, but hey, he been answering me, that's fine. That's, hey, I see the way you feel. You feel like I hang with somebody that tried to kill you, woo, woo, woo. That's the way you feel. 
How you feel about that, though? That's his side of the story. Is it accurate? Yeah, but there's a lot more before that. But let me ask you, if he would have got clapped that time, how he you would have He could have still felt? got clapped. He could have still got clapped. What you need to ask him is how you think that shit stopped? How you think? You think beef just ended? You think niggas just was like, oh, I missed him and well, I ain't go after him? You think, well, how you think that shit stopped? That's me. Like my man, please, it's a pass, let him live. Only because of you. But that still make them make them look at me suspect. Like, man, you know he violated. You know the treason rule. <laughs> Why are you looking at me disappointed now? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just saying, you man. Know what like, I'm you know, and shit is deep. And you know, I'm not for Marcy, so it's certain things. I'm just, I just gotta listen to and stay. I'm biased, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not that mean, yo, I'm only giving you facts, but at the end of the day, son, like, I don't, like I said, I don't hate him, and I don't, and I, and I don't think he hate me, but he ain't, he ain't talking about coming together, he just replying what, the way he feel, you feel like that, bro, that's cool, you know what the story is, you know what I'm saying, you know what it is, so why, uh, you know, why go through this? Now, in the Marcy Made documentary, you said that the bro went behind your back and went to the plug and stuff like that. Like, do you feel like he was really deceitful? Like, yeah, I'm gonna take this nigga plug? Or do you feel, did you feel like the bro is locked up? I, business gotta keep going, you understand what I'm saying? Like, do you feel he was being mad? Cutthroat, like, yo, fuck the haven, I'm taking his plug. Or just like, yo, the bro locked up, I gotta keep business going, I don't think he'll be mad. Like, I mean, how how you feel about that? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I'm just saying, like, because when you said he went to the plug, but I'm saying, like, and I know you said that was unauthorized. But was y'all tight like this, where he feel like, nigga, that's the people's, I could go to the plug. That wouldn't have happened then. And you just said, if I was locked up, what, what would it take? What would it take? Ask you? A visit, right? Yo. And where this, you was locked up at, at at that time? Oh, I was in Jersey locked up. And he was in Jersey at that time? No. No, he was in Maryland. But you was locked up in Jersey and they were still in Maryland? Yeah. Same, Could have had the visit though. But do you but think that's what he felt like? Do you think he said like, "Yo, nigga, that's the no, that's it's the people." It's, it's, it's basically fuck me, bro. It's basically fuck me. I can't be sitting in prison for a couple of weeks and weeks, and then you make moves without saying nothing. And yeah, it wasn't. Y'all ain't have no little beef, but bef right before it that, no riff. Like cool. It ain't like I sent niggas at him though. You gotta understand that. Dudes reacted on their own. Yeah, yeah, yo, 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 enforcer gonna be like, this is what I do. And how you felt about that when you heard it? You was like, ah, like, you Okay, know. then, well, the way it's broke down to, listen, if he take him behind your back, what would you think he'd do with your life? Hey, he's stealing from you. he kill you. That's the morals. That, that's straight, that's just how it go. You can't argue with that. Nigga like, yo, bro, I just saw your man. I just saw your man leaving the hotel with your wife. You can't argue with that. He had no, she had no business, they had no business there. So your enforcer acted on it. You mad? Yo, I, I body both of them. <laughs> you mad? I only did what you would, uh, hey, this is what you pay me for. So I'm just saying, it wasn't like that. They just, everything just happened to, what the fuck is he doing here? Yo, ain't no, ain't no loyalty in this. There's no niggas out there. 
I think, on my caliber of ethics. I'm the nigga, if you selling me them joints for 25, and you eating, I'm eating, and lovely, and I find a connect for 20, if I, kind of, if I find a connect for 15, I'm that nigga to come back to you and say, yo, I got a connect for 15. You wanna put it together and get a whole bunch? I'm that nigga. These niggas gonna think about, yo, I'ma sell to you now. They want your spot. I just wanna eat, all of us. These niggas want your spot. Like, oh, I'm getting for 15, I can sell it to him now. Ain't no loyalty like that no more. You feel like dudes was in competition with you? like? Cause you know some people they just they nah, they I love to like, compete. No, you can't be in competition with me, and at the same time, you in competition with me, or you want to be me, my nigga. Make it clear. You in competition with me, or you want to be me, my nigga. That's why I ain't work out for them. Cause you have to do what I done to get that shit. I put in work. Just told you I was in the trenches. I was in the crack houses, man, for days. On some real new, new Jack City shit. Before you bought niggas out there. Before I bought niggas out there. I didn't How bring long niggas, you was out there I didn't before bring you? Niggas out there till the lane was clear, till the coast was clear, till the runway was already laid out for them to land. By the time they got there, it was like, damn, that's your brother, that's your uncle. Yeah, well, okay, cool. That's Panama. Yeah. I did that. I did that in every small town. Niggas wasn't going in them towns. Body, they wasn't going to no town. Once I set the rules, set that down, I'm on to the next. I'm in Easton, I'm in Salisbury, I'm in Fruitland, I'm in Dover, Delaware, I'm in Wilmington. I'm getting it all, that's me. Them bitches coming out to party down in, I had Groove City, don't get it fucked up. You better ask them. I had Cambridge jumping. So when they mention me, like when they say the New York representative, you go down there and say, yo, who done it down? Who, who, who? They'll tell you, nah, ain't nobody never done it like that. They even had them out here. They even had them eating. The town is gonna be flooded on a week, and them bitches coming in from all over to see me. They coming to see us. Where them New York niggas at? Where they even in the map? Them niggas coming from out of town, they wasn't doing that. Cambridge, don't get it fucked up. Groove City was sending niggas at the hospital. You come in that town, they were sending them niggas out in the hospital. What's that, Groove break. City? Groove City is Cambridge, Maryland. Mm. Don't get it fucked up. You couldn't do a lot of shit. I had, I'm the one who let niggas come in from Salisbury, from Easton, this and that. Oh, I opened the doors for that because everybody was getting money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that nigga. Nah, them niggas can't fuck with me. How you was just getting it down there yourself? Bro, nah, I had a plan. Everybody got a role to play, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got a role to play. The delivery, what? Well, getting it down there. My connect said you better not ever try to carry and travel with that much money again. We will come get it. <laughs> Said so you had to plug send. We will come get it. Niggas had niggas was so, delivering. Man, I've been off the strip of 145. That was over with. Once 150K was out there and I'm out there for two and three hours waiting for them to count money, that shit was dead. They was like, no more. They went from bringing it, they, don't come here no more, Poppy, they tell me. Yeah. We bring it to Marcy. They brought it down to Marcy. Then it went from Marcy, oh no. Quarter million, we coming to get it. Where you want me to come? Oh yeah, y'all meet me in meet me in Dover, Delaware. No, not Dover. Meet me in Wilmington. You're talking about Dominicans? No. Yeah. Meet me in Wilmington, Delaware. There's an airport right there, right off 13. It's a hotel. Holiday Inn. 
How dare they bring the money up the turnpike? Don't chance it. No. <laughs> you heard what Scarface said. They, got, they, they fucking got the radar or something, this and that. We can't get it here. Oh, no, we're going to get it here. Too much money. One person. So now when I look at my trial I had, they was like, damn, I'm looking around. They said they had a gang of New York niggas, but they only had me. One person. Do you know what 85% of cocaine is on the Eastern Shore? No, I ain't say just Cambridge. I said the Eastern fucking Shore, man. That's a lot of coke, bro. You got the coke? Yeah. I got the money, too. Now he said, bring it. No, fuck you. I'm taking it to him myself. <laughs> That's what Scarface said. Man, they can't fuck with me. That's why I'm like, I'm in the top five in Marcy of getting money now. Don't get it fucked up. Let me ask you a question, though, because, you know, it's a, it's an actual fact that that movie Scarface inspired a lot of people to get bread. Did that movie have an effect on your mentality? Yes. Hell yeah. That, New Jack City, all of that shit had an impact on it what I, you know, how I thought. But for real, man, my hustle game was so vicious, though. My hustle, hustle game came from Trenton. It came from Trenton, not New York, though. My gift of gaff came from New York. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? My gift of the gaff came from New York, my talk game. That's where y'all got the most money at in Trenton? No, that's where I learned to hustle at. That's where I learned to hustle at, about really, that's where I learned to hustle at. That's where I learned to be like, that ain't no crack. Did you cook this yourself? No. What the fuck you got then? I'm gonna show you. Shout out EB, East Trent, man. Show me the fucking ropes. How long y'all was out there? I, first. I got there 88. I just missed the 40 plastics out Roger Gardens out West Trent. Just missed them. They was just having 40 fucking plastics. $40 for what happened. For nothing. Niggas got rich before I got there, but I still got the tail in. You said they were selling 40s? Man, they were selling 40s. Now, how much was in the... In nothing. The <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Nigga, when I got to high school, mm -hmm. I, I knew I wasn't going to make it. Shout out fucking Trenton, bro. Yo, I knew I wasn't gonna make it. High school, them niggas had Benzes, Porsches, Audi. Who, Trenton niggas? Trenton niggas! Jeweled out! What the fuck? School of Hard Knocks, nigga. Shout out to Whitey, my cousin. Put, this motherfucker, first of all, he, he wasn't showing me his, his head when I first got there. He was just on some low key shit, like, yo, I go to school and that's it. That nigga was rich. He was in high school. Yeah, we was in, he the one we was, yeah, we was in high school. I would go in the back, as he got 15,000 back there gambling. And in school. I tell you, I went to Trent High, I can't tell you about a fucking class that I was in. They just wanted me to play ball, man. <laughs> so that's how I got there. They was like, yo, you nice and yo, listen, this will work for you, this program. Shout out Steve Worthy that went to Ruckus. I played with all of them niggas. They, they was begging me, stay in school, man, stay in school, man, you nice and bold. All this motherfucking money in here, <laughs> school, you want me to do this? So I learned how to hustle from Trenton, man. I ain't never seen so much money, so much gambling. I learned to hustle from Trenton. You know what I'm saying? So opportunity after, once I lace that shit down, to knowing everything about Trenton, like I said, another fucking runway. Jay, yo, Buzz, boom, 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 we here, we got a team now. I built my team in Trenton, the first stop, though. Shout out Panama, that's still in Panama, man. I love you to death, man. He's one of us, he's original. Shouldn't be in Panama, ask me that, why? He shouldn't be in Panama, I don't know why. The relationship Jay and Panama had, I'm fucked up behind that, too. You got deported? Yeah. After a bid? Yeah. If Desiree Perez can get fucking departed, 
Panama could come over here. So you can't tell me it can't happen. Sounds from Marcy too? Nah, Panama from uh, Albany. Panama from Albany Project. Mm. How y'all got connected with him? Yo, you know how somebody introduce you to somebody and make them people never leave your life, never leave? <laughs> That's how Panama was. Shout out to Al. Al introduced me to Panama and said, yo, this is my man Panama, he's a good dude. And he was right. Panama was that nigga. Oh, that's the dude you said he could speak Spanish, so he was opening them doors for y'all? That's right. Panama was sitting there, I said I got my first brick. I ain't have enough. Till Panama said, meet up, meet up, meet up, meet up. I said, huh? <laughs> he said, go sit in the car. Two of them motherfuckers popped up. Mm. Two of them motherfuckers popped up. What? Come to find out, man, it's Panamanians just got a special jewel. They the most trusted, they the most loyal. Come to find out, Dominicans don't trust us, they trust the him. Cause them niggas would have gave me uh, 894 grams. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me 894 grams if it wasn't for Panama. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'd have had to get the whole one on the next trip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to P, man. But like I said, that nigga belong here, man. I can't understand that shit, man. That shit is like, I don't know. What the fuck? The relationship him and Jay had, like, this is, we live together. Even Panama and Emory, I don't understand it. Like, niggas just. A dead you, but that's here no there. Yeah, that, that, that train groomed me. Didn't he tell you that? She said it, right? He's train groomed me. He said that. He grew that groomed us, son. Huh? Cause I ain't really never fat, had no hustle like the way, you know, the the gambling and, and shout like I said, shout out to E B because he the one who showed me how. I said, man, you'll never get to earn this game if you don't know how to cook up yourself. If you don't do it yourself. I was like, huh? But I got the same crack. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you see that black shit that's on the end of the pipe where they tell you that they should burn it wrong? That's not crack. Oh, shit, that's not. He said, I got top side, nigga. What the fuck is top side? It's real shit, crack. It don't leave nothing. It burn all the way through. Huh? First time I ever been to New York ever up to Spanish Hall up up what is it Heights? Washington Heights. Washington Heights. Real talk. Real table. Triple beam. Shotguns at the door and they watch. This ain't for you, Poppy. This is for the guys that want to rob us. Oh yeah, well we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bugging. Like God damn, this is real. You be wondering, like, that shit is really a movie, but they really, it's real. Once he showed me that, man, I never looked back. You know what I'm saying? From Trent, I never looked back. I learned to hustle them, you know, shout out to Trent for giving me the love and, 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 and letting me be who I am. Like I said, it's the character. What but made y'all decide to leave Trent, though? Same thing. I was getting plenty of money in Trent. Plenty of money. Shout out North Train, Dolly Homes. I used to live in there. I'm from out East Train. I, I claim East Train. East Burn Avenue, I claim that shit. You know what I'm saying? But I got money all over. Roger Garden, Stuyvesant Avenue. Shout out to uh, Miller Homes. I was locked up with them niggas. MCCC, Mercer County Correction Facility. If you get one of them niggas that was locked up with me, ask them niggas about me and then. The whole fucking, my whole wing, 64 niggas, my whole wing. Ask them about me and then. Told them niggas, don't buy, nobody buy no more food in this motherfucker. I got him. Commissary on me. A week, nigga. I got a half a pound coming in this bitch. A weed, nigga. <laughs> 
These niggas swallowing balloons shit that I, uh, nigga, I got a half a pound of weed in here. Controlling shit up in there. Ask niggas about me. I'm a New York representative, nigga. I represent New York, but I'm from Marcy. So when them niggas, when you go through those areas, them niggas go, yo, I fucks with them. Yes, I fuck with him. I was up there with them niggas, I'm controlling. Like I said, I have a pound of weed easy in there. Niggas, how the fuck you doing this? Masterminding shit, man. I had the most comfortable, I couldn't believe that that was a bit. How long you had to do in there? Well, I did 11 months in there. And for what, they I caught you at work? Yeah, well, that was why I left Trey, cause shit, I'm one of them guys that got a gut feeling. When I got a gut feeling, I have to act on it. And I had a gut feeling I was either going to be locked up in Trey doing a long time, or I'm gonna kill my baby mama or she gonna kill me. <laughs> those are- But you had a baby mama in Trenton? Yes, those options was not good. So I was already looking for a way out. And the nigga told me, yo, boom, I got a spy now. Huh? What? A spy? I just need some extra work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got to do much. Just, I just need more work. Huh? What? I'm with you. I need to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm catching charges. When I left Trent, I had about six, seven charges, man. All possessions? All like, man. Trent, they was playing shit. Trent, yo, back then. Y'all know this, all right? But these motherfuckers, Trenton cops was crook. These motherfuckers was the crookedest cops I ever seen, bro. That one police, Big Red, was out there whooping ass, my nigga. They had a nigga out there really whooping ass. Mean Big Red? Big Red was whooping ass, man. The detective? Detective, narcotic nigga. They had some wild nigga. The last story was for me. These niggas planted shit on me. I said, I can't stay in Trenton. These motherfuckers are not, this, this is not happening for me. That's what made me leave. Black cops. <laughs> Black cops. They just know you out there getting that guap in they town. Yo, son, man, they was, it was horrible. And then you, you know, one thing on top of another, one thing on top of another. So, you know, that shit just led to me to be like, yo, what? This thing got a spot? I'm out. Let me go try this J and them. Just chill. Let me hold this down. And who was that? Or you don't want to say that was in Maryland and told you, y'all got a spot out here? Nah, it was a nigga in Trenton. Rest in peace, Melly Mel. Love him to death, nigga. Get money, nigga. 944 Porsche. Yeah, Trenton, he originally from Trenton? Trenton from Trenton. 944 Porsche in high school. Two of them. Mm. Two of them. Straight like that. You know what I'm saying? He like, yo. He was already getting it in Maryland when he was he, in high school? Nah. Oh. He ended up getting the spot later on. You know what I'm saying? After mm -hmm. high school, we, you know, we all out of high school and shit and this and that now. But later on, he ended up with a spot. Like, he couldn't hold it down. That was that project that you was on documentary? Nah, he, it, it, he, he wasn't out there. I did that the project. I did all that out there. He just knew a, a few people and that was it. You know what I'm saying? He just knew a few people, but the, the one or two times I went out there, that was it for me. I already sealed and locked in. I was locked into, I don't locked in the two old timers out there. The niggas bought out everything I had. The first six trips, I was down there. Mm. I was splitting up a half a brick with Jay and them and be like, yo, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna go there. And, and, and as soon as I get down there, I'm like, yo, I'm heading back. They took it. I'm gonna double up, go back. They took it. I'm gonna double up, they gonna took it. I'm gonna double up, they took it. I'm going to the jewelry store now, bro. <laughs> I'm going to get that. Take that, 30 quid. I need that. Two more trips, boom, Jay birthday coming up. Boom, boom, you need that. Get that for him. Boom, another birthday coming up, pat him on. Yo, you gotta see all, oh, my whole team look like that. So Maryland opened up, but it's so much more, man. It's so much more. Emery? I keep telling things I had like 30 of them down there. Emery was an earner. 
he just was family. I mean, he just was close with family. But I got rich off of plenty of other niggas. Man. My whole hustle, my whole hustle ethic was different from niggas. I already established in my mind that what I was going to do with these niggas, I'm going to turn them into bosses. All these little half ounce niggas and ounce niggas, I'm going to turn them into bosses. I'ma let them niggas get rich first, and then I'ma get mine on the back end. Ass niggas. Ass niggas. I took them from half ounce ounce niggas to all these niggas spending a hundred grand with me easily every other week rotation. I ain't have enough to feed these niggas, but I was gonna get rich. I had to take, I was taking these niggas money. I'm going to cop, yo, you wanna give me your money? You wanna pay 1400 for an ounce when I get back? Or you wanna buy for $1,000 right now, give me your money and I'm gonna have to use your money now. I got 50,000 of their money, you <laughs> good? It's all right, don't, I'm gonna let them eat. I'm gonna blow their ass up. When I get back, them niggas gonna run through that. They gonna run through that. They gonna flip that fast, they gonna flip that fast. Watch this. All of them got rich. Everybody I fuck with. It's not a nigga down there that ever, it's not a nigga that ever could fuck, that ever could tell you I took money from them on a hustling tip, that they lost money with me. These niggas was high school boys too. Did I get that out, did I tell you that? Who? High school, all of them. I had 14, 15, 16, 17, 16 year old niggas. Emery and them was 16. So when that nigga Jay said that line, 17, and I'm holding on close to a mill. These niggas were 16, 17, man. Niggas had that type of bread coming through? Emery owed me some money before. And he said, go to my house, open my safe, take your bread, put them I probably took the 25 or 30 that he belonged to me, and it was still about 40, 50 in there. For a high school nigga. It be days that nigga not in, I go to the crib on a school day, nigga. You ain't in school, bro? Nah, we ain't playing that, bro. No, I ain't have a rock. That's it. Here. It's a scooter. So I cared for the nigga. Me, mother, this, that. We was all good. But I made all these niggas bosses. I, Salisbury niggas, all these niggas, niggas from other cities, other towns. Bro, it was that project you seen? Bro, I used to hustle upstairs in the apartments up in there, bro. Bricks. Be gone, bricks. I used to just sit up there in the apartment, five bricks, six bricks like this. And motherfuckers would come up there going, yo, we looking for a um, dude named DeHaven. You know? And I'm talking to him like, who? I said, DeHaven. Like, yeah, where you from? I'm from Fruitland. Word. Word. Yeah, we just trying to. Said we can get some weight. Like, what you looking for? Oh, we want an ounce. I'm like, yeah, you got some food, man. Some money down there. Man, ounce is 12, man, but all right, I'm gonna get it to you for 11. So they just be like, cool. Let me get eight of them. <laughs> you be like, oh <laughs> shit. These niggas was bluffing, you know, they, they, they would have a little bit of money, you know, the robberies, they, they set up themselves for, you know, I'm not letting nobody get robbed, that's not gonna happen. But what you mean, They not gonna show money. you all the money, you get what I'm saying? They gonna be like, yo, uh, let me get a half, or let me get an ounce, and then they look at it. Like, yeah, that's that material, like, what's the name of that? Cause that's how those niggas are down there. That's how you gotta be though, No, man. that's how niggas, if one nigga come down there with that work, they be like, where they get that work from? And then it'd be niggas search for you, and then be like, where y'all from? from? Delaware. Seaford? Yeah. Okay. What's over there? Let's buy two ounces. All right, cool. You buy two ounces. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, take them two for the same price, bro. Oh, that's cool, man. I trust you. Niggas coming back. Not too many niggas run off with your money. Period. Not too many niggas run off with your money. 
I used to train. Oh, yo, you seen Shy? Shy ain't got, he, he, I'm looking for him, he ain't want me no money. Nah, I ain't seen Shy. All right, I can't tell you nothing until we find Shy. Because <laughs> <laughs> they would be using Shy money to hurry up, to double up. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm on to this shit, my nigga. I ain't from, I'm not from here, but I, I hustle here, my nigga. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Rich. Yo. What, what, you didn't what? need to see that. <laughs> that what, something went by that crazy? Is crazy. Yeah. That is a break. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, yo, Maryland was just another level for me, man. Maryland had me see those figures. Had Maryland had me see that million dollar mark. Maryland was just something crazy. Maryland was. Lion Island was really uh, the set off. I ain't gonna front. And the people I made rich, all the niggas I made rich down there, though, was the same niggas that was on the stand that was gonna testify against me for being raised for the rest of my life. So I said, the game is fucked up. Every nigga on the stand was a nigga I made rich. Testifying against me, I ain't done nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? And that's the that's the hurtful part right there. To see that, yeah, boy. And especially when you left the game. Like I left the game, bro. Like I made enough. That gut feeling told me to stop. I made enough. That gut feeling told me to stop. I had a salon down there. I had businesses. I had a condo in Delaware. I had everything that uh, I needed, bro. Cars, bikes. And I quit. I quit the game. Because I saw something happening that I didn't want to be a part of. I saw shit out of control. I saw new people try to take over my position. By flooding, the, by flooding shit out, you know what I'm saying, and that shit came to bite, you, bite them on the, bite them back. You said when you came back down to check Emery and Jay and them, they was out of control with. Out of control. Out of control with it, like, like I said, bro. What you mean out of control? Though? Like niggas was trusting too many people with hitting them with weight. I mean, like I said before, like. <clears throat> If you wanted to take over something I done, bro, you had to do what I done. And they tried to take over something and make something bigger than what I done, but it was just out of control. Like I said, I had certain niggas in certain positions doing certain things. I ain't let everybody do it. I ain't let anybody do it. That ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had it under control, and when I saw that shit was out of control, I, I just didn't feel that. I felt something bad coming on. Like, this is no good for me. So let me remove myself from this. I left, packed up, almost half a mil cash, and left. Moved down south, and three years later, the motherfuckers came and got me, the feds came and got me. Try to pull me into something that I used to do. Where they where they ran down on you in your crib? Nah, nah. I was going to court. I was in North Carolina. I moved down south. I moved down south to North Carolina, and I was going to court to play a traffic ticket. And <laughs> I'm suited and booted, Armani suit and going to pay. They knew you was going to court? That's, that's why they, how, you know, they act. Yo, and, and that's what saved me. Don't get it fucked up. Showing up at that court for that ticket kind of saved me to get out of jail later, showing that I wasn't on the run. I wasn't the type of dude to duck court and go and be on the run for shit. You know what I'm saying? So my, my lawyer argument was, look, the honor, like, he's not running. He showed up for court for this, you know what I'm saying? You know, 
when you're trying to get a bail. This is when I was trying to get a bail here. But yeah, I go to pay for a traffic ticket, them niggas was in there. Like, and, and it was the one of them other gut feelings. Straight gut feeling when I'm on the elevator and it's just a gut feeling like today is something different. Something is off today. Not knowing these two motherfuckers behind me in the elevator that followed me on from the moment I walked in the courthouse, these motherfuckers wasn't right. I just felt it. And them the same two motherfuckers when I, I walked into my courtroom, they go pay my ticket, they wait for them to call my name. Them two men went to the back. And they came out. You know this procedure. Hey, you the Haven? Can I see your ID? We just want to mark, make sure everybody's here for court today. And they show my ID. It's like, yo, come here. Um, you're under arrest. Well, such and such, such and such. No, no matter of fact, they state their name. They said, uh, my name is, uh, I'm a US, I'm a U.S. Marshal, such and such, a U.S. Marshal, such and such. And I was like, huh? Say that shit again? You know, I'm trying to clarify you saying U.S., you know what I'm saying, from regular police. You get what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute, you said U.S., right? You said, said U.S. Marshal. I asked them. I was like, U.S.? U.S.? <laughs> Yo, he kept saying, I said, U.S.? He said, yeah. I said, Is that, that, that's federal? He said, yeah! I'm like, God damn. And what they were saying, though, like, uh, conspiracy to distribute? Nah, they said, we, you know, U.S. Marshals to pick you up. You have a... Indictment for you have a warrant for your arrest indictment in out of Baltimore, out of Maryland. We just here to pick you up. That's all we here to do. And, and you will see the judge for what your charges are. To you know, in a couple of hours. You know what I'm saying? And this is your first time on this level, but you notice it is different. You've been locked up before. You know what I'm saying? But you notice it is different. You know what I'm saying? Then when you get in that courtroom, they took me to some secret location underground. Underground. And that's when you start to realize this is this is the big leagues. This is the NBA. This ain't college ball. This is the NBA, buddy. And I got in front of that motherfucking that shit. When I felt looked at that courtroom and seen that judge and seen how that courtroom was, I already knew it was. I mean, it, this is, this is, this is serious. Yeah. And, uh, when they talk to you with respect and honor, like, you know, Mr. Irby, and address you really nice, like, there's no bullshit. This is what we doing, we got an indictment for you in Maryland, um, we are gonna be holding on to you until, you know, you get to, to Maryland. And as you know, I'm fucking, and Wake County Detention Center, wait, right? That's a fed detention center? No, I'm in the Wayne County, regular county yeah. jail, right? Waiting on them to come get me. This is where I made a phone, I made a phone call to Jay from in here, to Jay Miles from in here. So we'll talk about that phone call later. But I'm in there, Wayne County, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. What the fuck are they supposed to come get me? A fucking week go by, I'm getting impatient. Shit, now I'm about to get shit cranking in this bitch, right? So shit getting lit in the in, in, in the county a little bit, right? So I'm like, what you mean, like beef, niggas? Yeah, niggas is uh, being paranoid and shit because niggas getting involved and shit. And I'm like, well, what the fuck going on? So these rally, you know, rally people, rally niggas are different. So a couple of rally niggas is like, yeah, man, I'm two niggas over there starting mad trouble, robbing shit and this and that. What two niggas? Them? These two little niggas from Durham, right? <laughs> I said, them two little niggas? I'll probably tell you, the number two days, I had them niggas going, doing too much. Them niggas was doing so much, the motherfuckers came and got me up. About two in the morning. Yo, pack your shit up, bro. I'm like, what's going on? Like, no, 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 you got to go. They threw me out of Wake County in the middle of the night Ship me to Wilson County. Wilson County was like, you know what Andy Griffin is like? You, you ever watch Andy Griffin? I know who that is, yeah. I never watched the show. You, you never seen that show, the Mulberry Jail. You never mm. seen that jail, that, the, the jail that he, he, the sheriff that he run? Mm. 
This shit is on some Mayberry Angus Front Country shit with you. But come to find out, this was a trans, this was a hub where they dropped federal inmates off, take them to the federal jail, and they drop federal inmates off that's going to court. Like, it's like a it's like an exchange, like transport. And I got to that jail, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Ain't no TV, nothing, what? I'm not about to do this. Like, look, just calm down. We know we just heard about how you weight count. This is what we're gonna do. Here, take this Mc, here's McDonald's, here's a newspaper, and the bus will be here tomorrow. <laughs> like, we don't want no problems. I'm like, cool, all right, cool. The bus so, will be there, what, to take you to the feds spot? Take you to the feds. Mm. And then I get on the bus and shit, and then the next day the bus come. So when the bus come, and it's time to go, I'm going down to VA. I'm going to FCI Petersburg. Federal, I'm going to the Fed joint Petersburg from there. But on that bus ride, I meet a young nigga. And he was like, this nigga was about 22. He was like, yeah, I just came from court. I was like, word? He was like, yeah. He was like, they gave me 360 months. Mm. And I can't. Yo, bro, I was sitting on the bus and I kept thinking, I kept thinking, I'm like, man, 300, 300, I kept going 300. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom how many years that shit was in my head. But the fact that it mattered, the nigga was, wasn't like, he, was, he wasn't budging on that shit. He was staying firm on that shit. He wasn't down on it or not. He was just like, they gave me 360 months or something shit. It's like, fuck that, they wanted me to tell on such and such and then these niggas told on me and this and that. You just like, I ain't got it. I'm not telling on nobody type of shit. I was just like, God damn. He was like, yo, bro, just be careful. And then he started dropping names. He was like, yo, where you coming from? I was telling him I was living down there and shit. I was like, and then he started dropping names on all the snitches and shit that in the area that I was in. Mm. And I'm like, okay, he put me on a lot of niggas. But when I got, I got the FCI Petersburg, and um, coming from where I was coming from, I was just like, this Fed joint, like you hear about Fed joints, but when I got to this Fed joint, I was like, yo, this shit look like a college campus. And you get, you like, you walk to your next, you walk the child and you walk to the lobby, you walk to this, like the shit was like a campus. I was like, this shit sweet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? This shit is sweet, bro. Go to child, it's a fountain, it's a soda fountain in this bitch. Wait a minute, this, what? Niggas eating real good and look at, yo, the nigga, they, he ain't shaking the spoon. He like, you want some more? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The child, nigga, at the child is like, yo, you want some more? You good? I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> next. He's like, nigga, man, you, you gotta, you, you got, you getting beef behind that shit. This nigga shook the spoon on me. But yo, I got in that shit, son, and it just was like a lot more relaxing. But you know what I'm saying? I, um, first thing first, I got to stretch my legs, and if I get to stretch my legs, I'm gonna open up some door. I put on a pair of fresh BBCs. You know what those are? Okay. They like the jailhouse sneakers, they call them better be careful. Right? <laughs> and I dunked on a nigga outside on the basketball. Mm. Yo, less than no time, niggas was like, yo, bro, we be having tournaments every other day. You wanna play for my team? I was like, hell yeah. And I'ma give you some sneakers. I'ma give you, yo, that shit opened up doors for me and shit. I was in there, like, niggas was like, Yo, bro, you gonna play for such and such and more? I was like, yeah, shit. Nigga gave me some sneakers, opened up doors. But then, I, you know, I just learned some shit. And I, I, I came across this old time and shit. And he was supposed to be like a jailhouse lawyer. I was like, you know how you be feeding the talk to somebody. I'm like, yo, listen, they got me live. That nigga shut me up from the door. He's like, look, I don't wanna hear it. Don't tell nobody your story in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? If, even if you, I'm like, but I ain't do, listen, don't tell nobody shit in here. I don't want to know because I ain't doing your case, but bro, just 
you see everything and you know, you follow the format formality, bro. Just don't tell nobody, don't talk to nobody. I'm like, damn. Why you like that? Couldn't figure it out. And when I got to my room though, it was a nigga from Baltimore in there. And I told him, he was like, yo, where you headed? I was like, my destination is Maryland, Baltimore. When I told him that, that nigga was like, you going to Baltimore? He said, yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Get as much sleep as you can. <laughs> I was like, what? He said, get as much sleep as you can. Son, I'm gonna leave off with this. When I got to Baltimore, and I got to Baltimore County City Jail, where they was housing the felony, uh, the federal inmates at, I'm gonna leave it like that, and I'm gonna leave that conversation on what it was like being locked up. For that Baltimore. part two, for that part two, that's a fact. You know, um, I think you got enough. Yeah, Z-Man, Suicide Polo, the Ski Man. I'm here with Marcy Legend, The Haven. And you know he giving up that history that's different. Y'all already know. We'll be back for part two for a fact. But like I said, man, shout out to Marcy May. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't see that, man, check it out. Shout out to Marcy, man. Like I said, man, this has been a blessing, man. Shout out to the new niggas out there. Shout out to Don Don and all the rest of the niggas on the other side, man, for just showing the love and the homage and respect, man. And that shit mean more to me than anything. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's definitely worth more money than anything to me, uh, just the respect that niggas give me in the projects. Um, like I said, man, a lot of niggas ain't gonna don't address this story because they know how real it is. But you know, like I said, I love my projects. I love representing for them, man. And I'll never let them down. I'll never let bad style, man. I represent Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, shout out to everybody in Mar and Tompkins, man, that I grew up with. I ain't mentioned them, man. I grew up with Knowledge and H and all of them niggas from Knowledge, man. And from from uh, Tompkins. Um, I got some amazing stories. Like I said, I grew up with them, man. And fast forward in that, man, I'll tell you a few stories about some encounters I had with them. And shit. This is when I got a gun put to my head. Like I said, most of my problems was behind Jay defending Jay, man, because I felt like he was my little brother and I wasn't going to fuck with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I've always been who I am. I never played to be a gangster, never tried to tell you no gangster stories. It's always about this money, man. And making my team look good. And man, uh, that's what I'm gonna do for Marcy, man. I'm gonna make us look good and represent. That's a fact. Always. That's a fact, bro. I appreciate you for coming on the channel. Now, I mean, I love the stories. This is an honor for me. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> but we're gonna make some history, man. That's a Yo, fact. So, yeah, shout out to Jazzo, Source Money, Ski, Beatle, man. All my real friends that I grew up with, man. And, you know, and like, when I say ski, man, that was one of the niggas that showed up for me on trial. It's so many people. If I ain't say your name, man, salute to you, man. Shout out to Baldy, man. Yo, rest in peace, man. That was my pops, peoples, man. Yo, I'm out, man. I love y'all, Marcy, man. We'll be Let right us. back at you. We'll be right back at you. Yo, I appreciate it. The you next know, stories, bro. like I said, man, I dipped about you know, a little bit. Now, we're we going to go back for all the details. We're going to go back on how I really had it, the money we was talking about. We're going to talk about Klein. We're going to talk about the next, you know, the stories about, we're going to get, I got plenty of them. Shout out to Klein. Shout out to Save. Shout out to my bro, John Dilly and the whole Red Hook, man. We're going to get it in. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to the whole fucking Brooklyn, man. Like I said, if you don't know who I am, you know why. You will know, man. Represent. That's a fact.